Lower House of Parliament supports motion to extend state of emergency in Grenada. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, November 2nd, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Members of the lower house on Tuesday unanimously supported the motion to extend the state of emergency for Grenada until May 2022. The motion, which was presented by Leader of Government Business and Minister for Finance, Honorable Gregory Bowen, seeks to extend the declaration of emergency by the Governor-General, dated January 11, 2021. The current state of emergency will lapse on November 20th. In moving the motion, Minister Bowen explained that the extension will give Cabinet authority to impose restrictions and other regulations under the Emergency Powers Act to keep Grenadians safe from COVID-19. He remains optimistic that the country will emerge stronger in the end. We left one, we went into the other. It was not a, a beautiful state. No, Mr. Speaker, I take the opportunity to compliment the Minister for Health and his staff, and in particular, Mr. Speaker, the people of Grenada, Caracou, and P.T. Martinique for working with the ministry, working with the government through the ministry to ensure that we can move ourselves from a dismal position two to three months ago to where we are today, Mr. Speaker, where the future is looking reasonable. We're looking forward to continue our significant drive and significant improvement with respect to the control of the coronavirus. Health and Social Security Minister Honorable Nicholas Steele and Tourism Minister and Medical Doctor Clarice Modest Cohen stood in support of the motion. Minister Steele assured that they are not overreacting as a government and said the move is necessary to protect the country since COVID-19 remains a real threat and our vaccination numbers are not at the level where we can be confident of being sufficiently protected. Minister Modest Cohen said with Grenada being rated as one of the countries with the highest rates of COVID-19 infection in the world during the period of community spread, government's aim is not to restrict people's freedom, but to ensure that the infection rate is kept under control. Our understanding of COVID-19, how it spreads, why it spreads, and the use of this emergency act in the weeks and months afterwards is one of the reasons we are here. Now, with a series of dates in the last couple of days of zero cases and very low, we're now at a positivity rate of under 1% in most cases, most days. We understand that. But we also understand that it is not just this legislation and those people inside this house that are responsible for it. This is the people of Grenada. We took COVID seriously. We followed the use of these emergency guidelines that we put here. We chose to allow and give up some of our constitutional rights. All of us must adhere to certain um, precautions because they realize that the precautions, like the mask wearing, the social distancing, the, the avoidance of, of, of crowd, crowding and crowd gathering and so on, that all of these things contribute to the reduction or the prevention of the transmission of the disease. So they also look at that. And I am happy to see that a lot of our Grenadian people have adhered to these regulations, these guidelines, precautions, whatever we call it. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell said if Grenada is to realize growth and more successes in the war against COVID-19, leaders within every sector must push the conversation of vaccination. Most have not done it because a lot of it has to do with the misinformation out there. And it's unfortunate because we have leaders in the society 
at various levels. You are not hearing enough voices. The leaders in all sectors of the business community, a few are doing it, but all of them, their voices must be heard. Because it's, if you have a business, the less immunity you have in the country, the less antibodies around, is the less activity that would be in commercial sector. So you have a, even if you're thinking selfishly, it's important for you to advise your people to do so. Government has answered the call to subsidize the cost of the COVID-19 PCR test, which is a requirement for travel to and from the island. Health and Social Security Minister Honorable Nicholas Steele presented the Quarantine COVID-19 Amendment Regulation 2021 in the lower house on Tuesday to change the cost of the PCR test from 405 EC dollars to $135. A negative PCR test result is a travel requirement for many countries. Minister Steele said government will subsidize the cost of the PCR test as it has been a financial burden to many desirous of traveling to Grenada. Many have complained why the, will, why the government is not subsidizing it, why is the government charging what it actually costs, why doesn't the government do like other governments and subsidize the cost of this PCR test. As such, we are now taking those necessary steps in this instance, Mr. Speaker. It comes at a significant cost, but again, it is in the balance, as best as possible to find that balance between lives and livelihoods, that the cost sometimes affects livelihoods, that the cost sometimes results in individuals choosing not to come to Grenada, that the cost for those who must travel uh, uh, becomes very prohibitive and prevents them from doing other things, especially those who are traveling for medical reasons or coming back for bereavement. So we have found a way and means, and we are going to subsidize as best as possible. It comes at the expense of something else. But we truly do believe that at this point, there's a balance that we can maintain. Tourism and Civil Aviation Minister Honorable Clarice Modest Kerwin said the high cost of PCR tests made Grenada uncompetitive as a destination of choice in the Caribbean. She said as a result, many opted to travel where the cost was not exorbitant. In some instances, the cost, which was in excess of $400, made it prohibitive for some persons to come. It may appear insignificant for one individual, but when an individual is traveling with his or her family, that is when it became a significant issue. And so we, we, in the first instance, we're looking at the Grenadian family that want to come back, come and visit. It did make it difficult for them because I had some complaints in that regard. And I'm happy that we could do that so that there's um, more possibility of access for persons wanting to come in but also on the tourism side, which, whether we like it or not, contributes significantly to the economy of this country. It also made us uncompetitive. When we did an investigation to what the other islands, other countries were, do, were doing, we came out dismally, dismally um, uncompetitive in that regard. The Ministry of Health has amended the public health COVID-19 regulations to reflect an increase in the number of persons to 75 who can attend any event or gathering once the venue can accommodate the number of persons in compliance with the physical distancing protocol. The amended regulations also make provision for funerals and weddings to host no more than the number of persons a venue can accommodate in compliance with the physical distancing protocol. In the most recent regulations before the amendment, funerals and weddings were restricted to no more than 20 persons. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. 
Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose, and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. If you notice someone has a fever and cough or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility. Welcome back. Grenada will soon benefit from the services offered by a cadre of skilled young men who have recently received Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ, and National Vocational Qualification, NVQ, Level 2 certification through the all-male program, Empower. Empower 2.0 has reaped tremendous success through the many opportunities provided to 224 young men who are now skilled, certified, and ready to enter the job market or establish their own businesses. The program financed by the Government of Grenada provides second chance opportunities for marginalized or at-risk youth. A graduation ceremony was held to celebrate the achievements of the young men who were all given a second chance to gain the necessary skills and knowledge in a number of areas. June Paul has the details in this report. Upon completion of one year in training, participants engaged in the all-male program Empower received certificates of completion during a graduation ceremony held on Friday, October 29, 2021 at the Grenada Boys Secondary School. The all-male Empower program implemented by the Division of Youth Development was conceptualized to provide the youth ages 18 to 35 years with second chance opportunities towards self-empowerment, holistic development, and skill certification. The 224 young men received certification in quality vocational skills training in several areas which includes bartending, general construction, plumbing, and electrical installation. Participants shared their plans for the future with the hope of creating employment opportunities for other youth like themselves. What takes from here on is like uh, to go look for work and start off from the or if I don't get work at the moment then start my own business like a bartender or then post you elsewhere like you know try and go overseas and get a good work or something like that. From here on I'm looking to get a job to start off and in a few years own my own business you know. The Empowerment Program gives us a good start and we're looking for, towards the future. For me. The next step for me is getting a job, which is so important. And after that, well, I, I could think about opening my own business or something like that. Well, right now, next thing for me is to look up on a little proper job where I could do my, practice my skills and then while alone because carpentry I really do so. I want to be a good carpenter in life, build a little horses. Well, I don't start that already, but I want to be able to come out with my own team. You check, get a group of young fellas like who are out there and they don't really have much jobs and things, so we can get them off the block, so we can get them a little occupied in life and they can see a brighter future for all everybody else. The program also includes a grant fund distribution to participants with interest in small business and educational advancement. The grant fund, which amounts to a total of $2,400 in value, will be presented to each participant. Supervision of the grant fund will be done by the Small Business Unit, or UDBIS, within the Division of Youth Development. Reporting for the Division of Youth Development, I am June Paul. Thank you, June. And finally, after years of being one of the top football clubs in Grenada, Paradise FC International Football Club, 
which is known to have continuously produced a number of quality national footballers over the years, is receiving some assistance from government through Parliamentary Representative for St. Andrew Northeast, Honorable Kate Lewis, through the construction of the clubhouse. The clubhouse is being constructed at Progress Park, the training ground of the club. Honorable Kate Lewis recently made a site visit to the project with the GIS to get an appreciation of the progress of the work being carried out. We may all know that Paradise Football Club International has been playing football for many years and contributing to the development of our young people, young boys and girls um, into the sporting arena. And I believe that for a team at that level needed to have a place to call their home, a team at that level should not have to wonder where they would be storing their gears, where they would be storing their prices. And as a result, after discussion with members of the executive, they requested a clubhouse and I am happy to put forward this project or to, to um, fulfill their request of this Paradise Football Clubhouse. Um, what we're seeing here at this time is the painting of the building. We still have some finishing touches to do before we can hand over the project. The clubhouse is expected to be officially handed over to the Paradise FC International during the first quarter of 2022. That story just ended the national report for Tuesday, November 2nd, recapping the top story. Lower House of Parliament supports motion to extend state of emergency in Grenada. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.